Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here coming to you live from my new office at our new home. And uh, we are not yet completely moved in, but I am moved in enough to have internet, to have my computer at my new desk, and we are ready to go. So we're going to continue right where we left off as the uh, Empire of Germany. It is June of 2018. I've completed my justification for war against Sweden. However, I have decided, at least for the time being, not to launch that attack. And the reason being that I, I feel like uh, right now the war is already fairly even and I don't want to do anything that's going to invite other nations to get involved. For example, uh, the United Kingdom, uh, some of the other nations of Europe that are sitting on the sideline for the time being. So I want to just kind of let this play out for a little while longer and see where things stand before I decide to press ahead uh, with this war. I may yet do it, but I I've thought better of it at least for the time being. So I'm going to continue to work on building up my own forces. Uh, in the meantime, I've done a couple of things. Number one is I've queued up infrastructure all the way along uh, to where I will be 10 out of 10 in infrastructure everywhere in the nation of Germany. That will help me to uh, kind of shift troops around quickly if I need to when the time and the need arises. Uh, the other thing I do, thanks to one of you uh, who correctly pointed out to me that you do not have to have multiple uh, production lines going of the same thing. You can just hit these uh, times 10 and times 5 views and then you can you can do more uh, and squeeze them in that way rather than going to an entirely new production line. So I've gone ahead and streamlined all of that and that means uh, some of these are going to have to work their way back up to peak efficiency again. But in the meantime nothing coming up very soon in terms of um, research. Uh, I'm going to have these level three uh, destroyers available to me soon as well as nuclear reactors and we'll start queuing those up when the time comes. Uh, I do have this. Uh, I do have some decisions I can make here. Uh, all of these just involve giving me more experience in the various areas of my armed forces uh, which give me a little more flexibility if I decide there are things I need to do. Doesn't seem like it's letting me do this last one. Oh, there it goes. Alright, so in the meantime, we're just going to kind of see what happens. I have ordered my forces that were down in Portugal to come up and take their place along the southern border with Austria, just in case I decide to go ahead with that declaration of war. Um, Austria is a libertarian government, so I'm kind of nervous about the idea of going after them. I wonder if it might not be better to go after maybe a communist nation somewhere. Uh, if I have any that are options to me. So we'll take a look and kind of decide what to do. So an interesting thing that I'm watching on this screen uh, with the war, uh, the Indians are losing a ton of divisions. Their number of divisions has been steadily going down as time has gone on. Uh, it seems like even though they are making headway in terms of territory seized from the Chinese over here, uh, it, it looks like now China's starting to turn that around. And in fact, India is losing a lot more uh, than China is. Even though you can see India's got massive amounts of divisions up in here. Um, it, I feel like that war is going to be static for a little while, but it's going to quickly go against India as time goes on. You can see China has lost 623,000. Uh, men compared to one and a half million for the Indian state and their number of divisions continues to go down their divisions are getting shattered they're losing manpower and even though uh, they're the second most populous nation on earth I think long term they're gonna run out of manpower against the Chinese and it just really is a matter of I think war exhaustion there but you can see how many just divisions everywhere that China has and so I feel like that's gonna go in their favor eventually even though right now it's still Still kind of showing as just kind of a zero-sum game. So let's go ahead and go in here now and take a look real quick at where things stand with my Navy. We can get modern destroyer armament. That'll help with our destroyers. Still got a while until we get nuclear reactors. I don't think I'm building any destroyers currently, so I don't need to worry about upgrading those. 
But I really just feel like that's going to go against India here. It's just a matter. You see, they're down to 262 now. That number continues to go down. I think it's gone down by about 10 in just a span of a couple weeks. All right, so I think what I'm going to do, uh, as I'm not planning on getting involved in any military action on uh, the European continent anytime soon, I'm going to see if I can send 24 divisions over to China uh, to help them. So I'm going to send that entire army that was up here in Scandinavia down uh, to China to help them in their war against India. Now, obviously, this is going to see a massive increase in my casualties when they arrive, but I'm hoping it helps them turn the tide in that war and, and really start to over uh, overrun India, who is now down to just 221 divisions. I feel like even those 20-some divisions I send, they could really make a difference in that campaign. So you can see that uh, overall the losses on my side are 1.25 million. They're uh, more than double that on his side. So it's definitely going in my favor. So I want to do whatever I can to help out. Oh, the Beijing Olympics. Something tells me those would not have been going on uh, with the current state of things in the world. Uh, interesting to note that still the main reason for the war in the first place, which was Taiwan, uh, there's still no conquering of that territory going on. Uh, in fact, really, very little territory has changed hands except for Norway. Not a lot happening other than that, really. Okay, India is now down to 220 divisions. i got to see when my expeditionary force is going to arrive in China so we can see when they can start to make a difference there. All right, where's my flag? There we go. Doesn't look like it's going to say, so I guess I'll have to wait and see. All right, so our nuclear reactors are complete, uh, or the research for those are complete, which means I can start to build some. I don't have a lot of places I can build one because I just don't have that many places that I can still build factories. But I'm going to queue up a bunch of those and send them to the front of the line, even ahead of the infrastructure I'm working on, because uh, we're going to make this war go nuclear as soon as I can get a chance. And every reactor that I have uh, basically equals about one nuclear uh, weapon per year that I can get into the field. So we'll start with that. We'll eventually queue up some more. Uh, in the meantime, India is now down to 215 divisions. Something weird that keeps happening is they keep dropping out of NATO and then they keep joining again. Uh, so probably in another couple of days, I'll get another notification that says the Indian state has joined NATO. That keeps on happening. I think the same thing keeps happening with Taiwan. But we can see now that India is up to almost 1.7 million in losses. And uh, I've still just lost 7,000. That number is obviously going to go up as I start getting involved in the war in Asia. Which I know they say, and Hitler should have learned, uh, never get involved in a land war in Asia. Especially one that involves the two most uh, populous nations on earth. Spirit of revolution in the United States. John Kerry, who is the president of the United States, I guess he won the 2004 election, uh, has today caused a lot of raised eyebrows when going on a rant about the political process that a Fox News pundit called unhinged and that was insulted as unpresidential and completely unprecedented by a speaker on CNN. Uh, so what does that mean for the U.S. government, I wonder? Looks like right now uh, the Democrats control 49%. So um, really not a lot going to happen there, I don't think, right now anyway. But I'll be curious to see what could happen with all of that. But we're going to continue to watch this war. India is down to 214 divisions. Territory-wise, China has still not pushed back to the pre-war borders. Uh, they still got to get a little bit more territory going here, and it looks like they're also going to go into Kyrgyzstan. But I don't believe my expeditionary force has yet arrived, so we'll keep watching for that. All right, we're about to complete military buildup five. We've got like three and a half days for that. Uh, in the meantime, it's October 2008. Uh, Allied losses on my side are up to 1.6 million, uh, so they've actually closed the gap a little bit. 
uh, in terms of the casualties that are being suffered. Uh, of course, I've actually now lost 37,000, so my expeditionary force is engaged now. I just can't see where the heck they are. I've been looking all over for them, uh, but I don't know where he's put them. But it does look like China has started to try and launch an invasion of Taiwan. It just doesn't look like it's going particularly well. But I am losing troops somewhere. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. And maybe there's a way that you can do that, and I'm just forgetting what it is. I thought normally that you would still be able to see your divisions that are an expeditionary force, but I'm just not seeing them anywhere. So I'm trying to figure that out, and uh, if you see that and I don't figure it out on my own, go ahead and use the comment section below and let me know how the heck you find your expeditionary force. Um, are these my troops here? But China, uh, they're really not taking any territory back. The, the borders have basically remained static for a while now. Uh, but India is down to just 203 divisions. Uh, so hopefully long term that's going to help. But we're going to go after military buildup 5 completes. We're going to look around a little bit and see what I decide to do. Because we'll be maxed out on that particular tree. So I'm going to go over here to um, emergency plan and hit start because I am now I'm in a defensive war finally, so I can go ahead and do that, and then that allows me to to do this do this one here, which is going to uh, remove this national spirit that has plagued me from the beginning. Uh, it's right here, and it gives me a 25% hit to division recovery rate and division organization. So that's going to be a massive improvement for my military moving forward. I just wish China would do something about this war so it just didn't remain a standstill uh, for as long as it has been. I don't think there are any, yeah, no allies I can call to the war. Uh, so I do have this justification against Austria that's coming up fairly soon, I think in February of uh, 2009. But again, I've just got to decide whether or not that's the direction I want to go. If we can get world tension up over 50%, then I can invite other nations to join my faction. Uh, mostly thinking about any monarchies that are out there that maybe haven't already joined a faction. I uh, just got to find who they are. So it looks like, uh, yeah, the Czech Kingdom would be a prime target for that. Let's see what it says. Yeah, world tension would need to be 50%. Um, on they... As a monarchist, they would actually need that 100% in order to join the faction. So that's not going to happen with any of the monarchies anytime soon. All right, so I can see that my manpower is starting to finally get down a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to look at changing my conscription law. I'm going to go to extensive conscription from limited. And that should, I think, improve the manpower available to me in theory. But it doesn't appear to be changing. Maybe I have to wait until the next day. No? Nothing. We got nothing. Okay. Looks like I've maxed out this, uh, just about maxed out this air doctrine tree. So I'm kind of surprised by that, that changing my conscription law didn't do anything there. So it says uh, limited uh, conscription. Let's pause for just a second. Limited conscription. No, I didn't want to change it. I just want to look at it. Uh, recruitable population of 1.5%. Extensive is a recruitable population of 4%. So why did the number not change, I guess is my question. Not really sure. I guess, I mean, is it because total mobilization hit, get, hits it for 5% and until, I don't know. That makes no sense to me that it wouldn't have changed anything. All right, let's take a look here. Bar Barbarossa class, we're going to go ahead and start researching those missile cruiser threes. Again, I, I'm a little disappointed that China's not making any effort whatsoever to attack the Indians. So I'm thinking about maybe pulling my troops out because they're obviously wasting their time there wherever wherever it is that they are. I think it must be because China's focusing on trying to invade Taiwan. It looks like the French actually 
landed a division there, but things are not looking so good if they don't back that up with some more troops. Well, there's one of my divisions right there. So I guess they just spread them out all over, and that's why I don't see where they are, because they're just kind of in every little nook and cranny. But I've lost 55,000 men. India's kind of holding firm at 203 divisions right now, so that's kind of stopped for the time being. All right, so we've got our, our uh, second level of aircraft carrier completed. I want to get those up a little more before I start building any. See if I can find those. This view is a little big for this. I wish I could kind of zoom out a little bit better. Um, where are they? Here we go. We've got the Vader, uh, Fatherland Class 3. It's going to take almost a year to re uh, research those. So I think maybe for now we'll go with the carrier nuclear reactors. And maybe we'll start building some of those level 2 carriers, even though they're not all that advanced. We're in January 2009, so I'm going to have a decision to make fairly soon about what to do about Austria. I just fear that that may invite nations like the UK and Italy into the war where they haven't already decided to join. And it also means I should probably recall my expeditionary force, which I just feel like isn't doing much over in China anyway. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Where are they is the question. Interesting that it's not instantly giving me control back of those like it said it would. Maybe it has to wait until they come back. Well, it looks like it's going to park my divisions down here in uh, southeastern Africa. So I guess that's where we're going to put them for now until we figure out what else to do with them. It just returned them to the nearest friendly territory, is what apparently it did. Not entirely sure what else I'm supposed to do about this. They're parked all over the place, apparently. Looks like some of them stayed in China. Where are these guys going? I'm just trying to follow the line. Looks like they're still headed back to China. So I don't know what's going on with all these Panzer divisions. I guess I'm waiting for them to kind of wash up on shore somewhere. And we'll just have to keep adding them to my army as they get there. In the meantime, just kind of taking a look at things. India is still at 202 divisions. Really nothing has changed much at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to take this army that is all over Kingdom Come and I'm going to put them on the border with Austria in preparing for that war. And hopefully that will get them transported up here as quickly as possible. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to happen, but we'll figure it out. Alright, I'm going to start building some missile cruisers. Uh, slow down a little bit on my production of submarines. Of course, that's going to mean a, a change in some trade. Most notably, just switching over from trading for oil to trading for a little more chromium. I think that's chromium, yep. Uh, and also, for the same reasons I decided not to go to war with Sweden, I've also decided not to declare the war on Austria. And here's why. Austria, I believe, is part of the European Union. And because they're a part of the European Union, uh, if I attack them, I think they're going to basically call the rest of Europe to their defense. And that's going to end up bringing the UK and Italy and all these other countries into the war. And it may even flip some of my allies in Europe against me. So I'm definitely wise, I think, to continue to focus my war on non-European nations. So with that in mind, I think my next national focus after I finish up Naval Program 1 is going to be to uh, go ahead back to over here where I have uh, Colonial Restoration League and it gives me an opportunity to um, 
No, I think I befriended the former colonies. I can't do that now. I was going to say I could I could put a claim on some of those African nations, but that might be the way for me to go to avoid ticking off all these uh, European countries that may decide to turn against me. In the meantime, we'll keep keep working on building up the navy and the army. Continue recalling my forces back to Europe from all over the globe, wherever they may be at this point. And continue to watch this basically stalemate of a war that continues to happen. Uh, you can see now he's lost 3 million and he's only got a fielded manpower of 2 million left available to him. U.S. 172 divisions. Indians down to just 124 divisions now. So they've lost a huge chunk of their divisions. How on earth they're still holding up against China, I really don't know. But we're going to watch this a little while longer, and then I'll probably wrap this episode up, even though it's a little shorter, just because there's not a lot going on right now, and I want to try to get to some more action. Oh my goodness gracious. We just I just happened to be looking over here in India. I guess I know why India is losing so many divisions now. I just watched a nuke go off in Mumbai. So I'm... I'm I can only assume that China must be nuking India. But now India's got nuclear weapons too, so I'm not exactly sure what's happening here. Uh, but dang, definitely didn't see that one coming. I just happened to be, I was over here thinking about maybe a naval invasion. And boom, I saw this nuclear weapon go off. So let's take a look and see. That's got to be what happened to India's divisions. I, I guess nu China must have launched a massive nuclear attack on India, which, wow, I mean, that that opens up a whole new world to all this. I'm surprised they haven't nuked Taipei, uh, Taipei yet in Taiwan, but I guess that's because those are Chinese people. We're going to go ahead and, and queue up a few more nukes ourselves just out of, an, out of an abundance of caution and preparation. There's only a couple places I can put them. But, yeah, didn't expect to see that at all. So we'll keep a close eye over here to see if any other explosions happen. I don't know if I'd be able to see them unless I'm zoomed in enough. All right, so as we are now into April of 2009, you can see China is starting to finally push back. They've almost pushed things back to the pre-war borders with India. Uh, that is due in large part to the fact that India has just run out of steam. I'm guessing some of their troops got nuked because they lost about half their divisions in just a couple of months. They're down to just 104 now. Uh, we're going to see a general collapse of the Indian resistance, I think, fairly soon. The enemy's down to uh, under 2 million in fielded manpower. He just can't possibly sustain and hold out. If China would just rush enough troops down to that front and push, uh, they could push well into India with very little trouble, I think. So we'll keep an eye on this as it pro progresses. Uh, I'm just waiting on some new things to, to happen here, but very little going on right now in this episode just because of uh, me being in the middle of Europe and most of the fighting being over in Asia. So i uh, love to hear your thoughts. What do you think I should do next? Is there something I should do to kind of expand? Should I go ahead and send my troops over back to China and let them use them? to try and uh, finish overrunning India? Should I look toward fighting somewhere else? What should I focus on as far as what I'm building uh, with my army, my navy, etc.? Love to hear your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Hit that thumbs up if you want to see more of this. And if there's other games that you'd like to see me uh, play, I'm going to be doing a, a channel update later on today. Uh, you'll you may even see that before you see this video. I'm not sure, but uh, I'll be asking about that. So please use that uh, opportunity to let me know what you'd like to see more or more of. And as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this channel and for following along. We'll see you again real soon. Thanks for watching.